Well, if you've ever been the victim of a scam, you know exactly how it feels. Getting ripped off feels horrible. So today, ways to prevent being taken and the best sources for getting good consumer information. Karen Stiles is the director of Call for Action here at today's TMJ4, and she's here to help keep you safe from scammers. I think everybody is so on edge about this because there are so many ways to get scammed now. There sure are. You know, as much as you try to protect yourself from that happening, um, sometimes you just cannot avoid it happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know that's why you exist. And I think yeah. it's we're really lucky at today's TMJ4 to have you right here in our building doing what you can to help consumers. You guys take calls all the time and try to help people address things like this that have gone wrong. So one of the reasons that we're having you here today is because it's consumer protection week Correct. right Natural. what are some of your favorite ways um, for people to protect themselves the best way people can protect themselves is through consumer education take the time and go to the Federal Trade Commission's website the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture Trade and Consumer Protection as well as sites that you visit on a, a regular basis even Facebook has got an area there of how to protect yourself that's interesting because I think people see it and, and Facebook and other social media sites do this. They, they send you little alerts like it's time to see if you're protected and then people are just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just want to see people's kids and, you know, dogs and cats and stuff. <laughs> so it is important to just take five minutes every now and then and check in with yourself mm -hmm. protection wise. Absolutely. What are some of the ways that you're seeing right now that people are getting scammed, we say ripped off, being taken advantage of? You know, in addition to people running into problems when they hire a contractor or uh, have repair done on their cars, a lot of times people just are not aware of all the different scams that are going on out there. Okay, so they pick up the phone, they take that call, and then before they know it, they're hooked in. The big one right now is people getting hooked on computer repair scams. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you really need to check this stuff out first. Well, and I'm seeing a lot more by email, an email that looks legit to me, yes. uh -huh. whether it's from a bank or there was one recently that looked like it was from our corporation, our company, mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, I think I should click on this and open this attachment. You know not to do that, but it looked so legit. They're doing a much better job of making things look real. Absolutely. You've got to trust that gut instinct that if it, something looks confusing or just doesn't seem right, don't click on that attachment. Don't call a phone number in that email. Call a phone number that you know is legitimate. Mm -hmm. And also get your, your filters to where they're at the highest level um, as well. Because you can always go in and check those filtered boxes just to see if you've missed anything. Right? When it comes to things like email. I was once scammed at the very most base level where a server took back my credit card to for me to pay for a meal, wrote down all my information, and then bought a whole bunch of stuff in a city I was visiting. Which was really unusual, but I didn't get alerted to it immediately because... I had alerted the bank that I was going to visit that city. And it was so yeah. strange, like how the whole thing transpired, but there are so many ways that you just aren't even thinking about what could potentially happen to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you find is the most common reason that, that people are taken advantage of? Why does this happen to us? I really think that it's lack of education, that you didn't hear that this scam existed out there, so you end up falling for it. But there are times, too, that you are dealing with an unscrupulous business or an agency. And so that's why National Consumer Protection Week does exist, so that people not only learn how to protect themselves from scams and ripoffs, but know what their rights are and know how to take action. Mm -hmm. So how specifically, then, does Call for Action help? I mean, obviously, there's information out there. People just have to be able to access it. Absolutely. Our office provides not only education and resources, but we also provide mediation of consumer-related uh, questions, problems, complaints, things like that. And as part of National Consumer Protection Week, we are um, making available to co the consumers in our area a copy of our free identity theft brochure. They can just simply contact us and we will be happy to send it out to them. That's fantastic. This is absolutely free. All people need to do is get in contact with you guys and you'll send this out. And I had my purse stolen and, mm -hmm. and you um, in particular were super helpful to me because there are a lot of steps that you should be taking to protect yourself from identity theft mm -hmm. that I had no idea even existed. Yeah. Um, whether it's your social security number, your driver's license, all those kinds of things. There are things you should do as quickly as possible and having something like this on hand is really helpful, I think. 
Absolutely, because when it happens to you, as you can relate, you panic and you literally freeze. You don't know what to do. If you've got one brochure that can walk you through step by step, it can calm you down so that you can take the immediate action, the proper action, to avoid yourself from getting scammed further. It's unbelievable, too, when it happens to you. So if you have your purse or your wallet mm -hmm. or, or something taken, the same with you with a credit card, how quickly the, the criminals um, act. I mean, my yes. credit card was used a dozen times mm -hmm. before I could even start making the phone calls I needed to. Absolutely, and so the quicker that you can take action, the better. The good thing with credit cards is that if you contact your credit card company immediately to report the problem, you won't be responsible for those charges. But if they've got your social security number, your driver's license, you know, pieces of mail with your address on it, there's a lot of damage that they can do to, to you in a very quick hurry. Well, and, yeah, and one of the best you tips scary. you gave me after that happened was to travel lighter. Like, take yes. a lot of the stuff that you're not using out of your purse, and especially when you're traveling, yes. don't have have all your credit cards and your, you know, everything and all your checkbooks in there limited to what you just need for that day. And I do end up cleaning out my purse a lot more, but I think that's a great tip. And don't let people know when you're on vacation, you know, that you're out on vacation, okay, so that you're alerting them, hey, come break into my house. Right. Or there's also the vacation scam where somebody calls and, and claims that they are you and they're on vacation and they are in trouble and they want you to wire money. Don't fall for that. Let let the right people know that you're gone, okay, and that, you know, if you need money, that you will be contact them a different way. Yeah, and if the IRS is trying to get a hold of you, they write a letter. They, they don't, don't call They you. don't call you. That's, oh. like, that's really, I mean. Unless yeah. you call them. Right, all right. right. But, but they're not going to just, careful. like, out of the blue call you and be like, what's up, can you give me your credit card number? And it's not can you, it's you must, and we're going to arrest you if right. you don't. Exactly. They don't come to your door and arrest you, right. all right? You do get the letter. You do get an opportunity to... Uh, go over your situation first before any kind of extreme action like that would even happen. Yeah. Yes. Great information, Karen. Thank you so much yes, for being thank here you. and sharing this with us. So just so you know, the office, the call for action office is open Tuesday through Thursday between 11 and 1. Consumers can call anytime though at 414-967-5495 or you can email them and be sure to ask for the identity theft brochure because they'll send it to you for free. The um, email address is call for the number four action at tmj4.com. You can also check them out on tmj4.com too. Thanks again, Karen. Thanks. Appreciate it.